The next topic is called geometric series. And geometric series have the following form. And let's begin by writing out a few terms of this series. Here are the first three terms. And we note that a has to be different than 0, because if a is equal to 0, well then all of the terms disappear. Now to determine if this series converges, we find the nth partial sum, which is. And now let's write out the terms of this series. And now I'm going to show how to simplify this expression, and the first step is to multiply Sn by r. So when I multiply this expression by r, um, so this first term is, becomes ar, the second term ar squared, the third term ar cubed. Essentially I'm adding 1 here to the power over r. So ar to the power n minus 1 became, becomes ar to the power n, and ar to the power n becomes ar to the power n plus 1. And now I'm going to do sn minus r sn. And now this term here cancels with this one, this one with this one, ar cubed cancels with the term that we can't see here, and ar to the power n minus 1 cancels with the term that we don't see there, and these two terms cancel out. So I'm left with the following. And now I'm simply going to solve for Sn in this expression here. So I begin by factoring Sn out on the left-hand side. And now I simply isolate Sn here on the left-hand side. And now I have a simplified expression for Sn. And I can simplify this a bit more by factoring out the A on the numerator. So now we look at the sequence of partial sums, which is, and if this sequence here converges, then we can say that the geometric series also converges. And to determine this, we look at the following limit. So here's our infinite limit, and let me remind you that A and R are constants, and what we're going to see is that the limit uh, will equal to a finite number for certain values of r and will tend to infinity for other values of r. And let, let us begin by looking at what happens when r is equal to 1. When r is equal to 1, the limit simplifies to the following. So on the numerator, 1 minus 1. On the denominator, 1 minus 1. So the limit is equal to 0 over 0. So the limit does not tend towards a finite number. Hence, what we say is that the infinite sequence diverges in this case, and for this reason, the infinite series also diverges. We now um, analyze the limit for when r is greater than 1. So firstly, on the denominator, we have 1 minus r, which is a constant when r is greater than 1. And on the numerator, we have this expression here, which is an exponential function and as n tends towards infinity, well, this here tends also to infinity. Hence, the limit tends towards infinity. And once again, we say that the series diverges. We now look at what happens when r is less than minus 1. So once again, on the numerator, we have the exponential function, which tends to um, minus infinity this time. Um, but times the minus here, so what we have on the numerator is positive infinity, and on the denominator we have a positive constant, so once again the limit tends towards positive infinity, and we say that the series diverges. We now look at what happens when r is in between minus 1 and 1. So what we have on the denominator is a constant, and if we look at the numerator now, this term here, so r is in between minus 1 and 1, so now when n tends towards infinity, this term here is actually tending towards 0. Hence, the limit now tends towards a divided by 1 minus r. So we found a case where um, the limit converges to a finite number, hence the infinite sequence converges to this number, and the series also converges to this number. Now there's one more case that we need to look at, and that's when r is equal to minus 1. We get the following limit. And now if we look at this limit, 
um, when n is even, so an even number plus 1 gives an odd number, so we have minus 1 to the power of an odd number, which is going to give us uh, minus 1, minus 1 over 2, and now when n is an odd number, odd plus 1 gives even, and we're going to get 1 over 2, so the limit is actually oscillating between, between minus 1 over 2 and 1 over 2, and for this reason, reason does not converge to a single value and diverges, and in this case we'll say that the series diverges. Now all of these results are summarized um, by the following theorem. So when absolute value of r is less than 1, the geometric series converges, and it converges to this expression here, a over 1 minus r, and when absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1, then the geometric series diverges. Let's now look at an example. So determine whether the, ge the geometric series converges or diverges. If it converges, find its sum. And here's our geometric series. So the first step is to identify what is the value of a and what is the value of r. And we see right away that a is 4 and r is equal to minus 2 over 3. And now we look at the absolute value of r and we check to see if it's less than 1 or if it's greater than or equal to 1. So let's find the absolute value of r. So this is equal to 2 over 3 and 2 over 3 is less than 1. Therefore, and now following theorem 2, we say that the geometric series converges and it converges to a divided by 1 minus r, which is equal to the following. And this here simplifies to the following. And let's look at another example. So once again, we're asked to determine whether the geometric series converges or diverges. And here's our geometric series. And once again, we need to identify the values of a and r. Here a is equal to 2, and r is equal to minus 1.5. And we look at the absolute value of r. And given that the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1, we say that the geometric series diverges. And this concludes the presentation on geometric series.